Section 1.2, Row Reduction and Echelon Forms. We will now look at what row echelon form, commonly known as REF, and reduced row echelon form, or REF, look like. Our goal is to use EROs to find if there is a solution to a system. A matrix of a linear system that is REF indicates whether the system has a solution. A matrix of a linear system that is RREF specifies the actual solution that we're looking for. So let's look at some properties of row echelon form, REF. Keep in mind when you're actually looking for a solution to a system, you want to make sure it see, make sure your matrix is either a coefficient matrix or an augmented matrix. We want to have an augmented matrix to actually find the solution. For these, we will not use an augmented matrix. We're just looking at the coefficient matrix. So some properties that we want to have are, first, rows with zeros are at the bottom. We notice here. Two, if two successive rows, in two successive rows, the first non-zero entry, and we're going to notice here this is the first non-zero entry. We're going to call this a leading entry. In a lower row, so this is also a non-zero, um, first non-zero entry. This is the last non-zero entry. We notice that the ones in the lower rows are farther to the right than the non-zero entry of a higher row. Last, entries in the column below the leading entry, so here and here, we notice are all zeros. Okay. Let's look at this here. Does this matter that they're all zeros? We actually see it doesn't because this here is not a leading entry. So they can be zeros or not to be in REF. When looking at our REF, our reduced row echelon form, it has all the properties in the previous slide of the REF, but here, we want to make sure that each leading entry is a 1. And we call this the leading 1. And lastly, a leading entry is the only non-zero entry in the column. So we notice here, these are my um, leading 1s. We notice that under our leading 1s, above and below these leading ones, we have zero entries. And again here, we have leading ones, and above and below these, we have zero entries. Now we'll give you a second to go through these properties and look at each of these matrices, and we want to decide if they're REF or RREF or neither. Um, pause the video now, and once you go through them, you can come back for the explanation. For the first one, we notice that we have a leading one here, a leading one here, and a leading one here. Okay? And so our first entries are leading ones, um, but we see that it's not zero, so this is a REF. Okay? Our next one, because our leading ones are not further to the right than the previous one, then we say that this is neither. Here, we notice that we have a leading one, a leading one, and these are the only leading ones. My zero, rows of zeros, are at the bottom. Okay. And so, and also, there are zeros above and below, so therefore, this would be R, R, E, F. Our next one, we have a leading one here and a leading one here with zeros of below and above. And so this is also R, R, E, F. Our next, we notice that we have a leading one here, a leading one here, and a leading one here. But we notice here, there is a one in our last row, which is not to the right of the leading one of the row above it. So we can say that this is neither. In our last, we see that we have a row of zeros that is not at the bottom. And since it is not at the bottom, it is also 
neither. Now we wanted to define two types of eliminations. We first have Gaussian elimination, which is a process of using EROs to transform a linear system into one whose augmented matrix is REF. So if we're looking at the system here, we notice that it is REF. It also has this stair step pattern. So it doesn't matter that all our leading ones are not one, leading entries are not one, because it can still be REF and it has the zeros below our leading coefficients. And then we have our Gauss-Jordan elimination. And this is the process of using EROs to transport the linear system to ones whose augmented matrix is REF. And what do we notice here? We still have this stair-step pattern, but we also have zeros above. And we have all leading ones in this case, so therefore it is REF. Now I would like you to take a second and look at the following augmented matrices. We want you to determine if the matrix is in REF or R REF form. Then decide if it is consistent or inconsistent. If the system is consistent, then give us the solution. So pause the video and attempt to work these. We will go through them when you are complete, done. Let's now look at the first um, matrix. We notice here, we have a pivot here and a pivot here. We don't have zeros above and below, above, so we know that this is just in REF. Now let's look to see, since it's in REF, is it consistent? If we rewrite this matrix in the form of, let's say this is x1 and x2, if we write it back into its um, system form, we have this equation here is x1 plus x2 is equal to 0 and we have x2 is equal to 1. If we back substitute we'll get the solution to the system is negative 1, 1. So indeed we see this equation is consistent okay, and has a unique solution. Okay. We actually see here we can see from this original matrix here that we will have a solution and that this um, system is, will be consistent without working through the problem. Let's look at the second one. We notice here we have a leading entry here, okay? And uh, we just really want to look at this part of here, but this happens to, well, you know, the, we have our stair step pattern, and so therefore this is in REF. But when we write it back into our system, we notice here that we'll have, this here gives us zero is equal to one. Since zero is not equal to one, we know that this is inconsistent. Notice here, I have my leading one here. It's in my stair-step pattern. So therefore, this happens to be R, R, E, F. If we have x1 here and x2 here, we notice we have all zeros here. So this only represents the equation x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 3. We say that x2 is what we call a free variable. So we said that it is free, and we write this system in this way. If we say let's let x2 equal to some a, then Anything in the form, so we, that will imply that x1 is equal to what? Negative 2a plus 3. So what would the solution to this be? x1 comma x2 will be anything of the form negative 2a plus 3 comma a. And if you put any a in here, any real number, go back and check and see does it solve this system here. Notice we have a pivot here. We are in reduced row echelon form, but when I get to this portion here, what do I notice? I notice that again, zero, sorry, zero is equal to one, which is not a true statement, so this is inconsistent. Sorry about that. Let's, now let's talk about pivots and pivot columns. 
We say a pivot position, sometimes just called a pivot, is the location in the matrix that corresponds to the leading REF. Um, leading one in the REF, and the pivot column is the column of the matrix that contains the pivot position. So let's now go back to our previous matrices and find the pivot positions and pivot columns. We will now highlight our pivot positions. So we have a pivot here, and we have a pivot here. Next we have a pivot here. Next we have a pivot here. Then I have a pivot here and a pivot here. So if we want to see our pivot columns, this would be a pivot column, this would be a pivot column, here, 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 and here. We now have a theorem that says that a linear system in REF or REF is consistent if and only if the last column of the augmented matrix is not a pivot column. If it is consistent, then solution has a unique solution or infinitely many solutions. So notice here we have a pivot column that's a part of the augmented matrix and here, excuse me, a part of the solution. So therefore these two systems were inconsistent based on our theorem. Now let's look at the um, pivot columns here. We notice that this solution had a unique solution and this one had infinitely many solutions which um, we see in our theorem holes.